quick question. Have you tried playing with your asshole? So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be doing part two of me rating your fantasies. This time though, I'm gonna ask you for the next prompt for the next hashtag terror rates. So you can send that to terror rates at gmail.com or use hashtag terror rates on Twitter. Keep in mind, any other avenue that you try will not work for getting your submission into the video. I'm only checking Twitter and email. So those are your two options. But the next terror rates that I want to do is going to be terror rates your attack attempts at actually picking me up through DMs. So what I want you guys to do is formulate an initial sentence or an initial paragraph to introduce yourself or to send to me that you think might actually be successful in getting my attention. I am so excited to see these because I actually want to learn something too. I want to learn something about myself, what will pick me up the best, and I want to help you guys have the knowledge to pick girls up on Tinder or to talk to famous girls or whatever, even though that's like a one in a million chance. I still want to give you guys the ability to be the best equipped that you possibly can for that situation. So let's explore what's best together. So send your pickup sentences, lines, or paragraphs to terrorrates at gmail.com or hashtag terrorrates on Twitter. Now let's get in to the fantasies. So our first one here is one of my kinks is fucking a girl's ass cheeks getting an ass job. Such a tease. I would assume that much like having a tit job you would have to have a certain amount of ass in order to successfully give an ass job. Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever been with a girl who couldn't give an ass job or had a little bit too much ass to the point where you feel like you're getting lost in there. And if this is a turn on for you too, I know Jay likes to do this to me, but it just kind of slips out. I don't know, it's hard to do. And I would assume that I have an above average amount of ass volume. So I can't imagine that it's very practical, but as with a lot of other fantasies and fetishes, even some of mine, the things you want are not always practical. <laughs> Thanks for submitting. Our next one entitled Fantasies reads like this. I love your channel and content. I just wanted to say that my main fantasy is face fucking a woman until she vomits. I know this might be nasty to some people, but I just love when females can deep throat a cock as big as mine and regurgitates, but still keeps going. That's real woman power to me. I am sure there is a dick big enough or gross enough, I'm not sure, to make me vomit, but that would definitely not be something that I would like to happen. Wouldn't it be crazy if that happened to me and then you were like, oh my God, I never told you this before, but that's the biggest on to me ever. Can anyone relate to this one? I feel like zero people are gonna relate to this one. We'll definitely have a lot more people relating to cuck fantasies than making a woman vomit with their cock, which when phrased that way sounds quite sad. Props to you for the humble brag on how big your dick is though. That was a good one. So this next one comes from someone called Bi Guy. I'm assuming that's not his real name, so I'm okay with disclosing it to you guys. He says, hey, if it's not too much, just one pick. I don't know what that means. I'm not sending a pick. He didn't send a pick. I'm confused. So my ultimate fantasy fantasy would be shape-shifting, so I can change depending on my mood. I could go from being a big curvy bimbo girl, like you but not as smart, aww. <laughs> Flattery will get you very far, sir. A petite little nice girl, a twinky little femboy, so I'd keep my cock, or for a rare occasion I could be a big hunky muscular man with a big thick cock. In real life, I'd like a girlfriend who's actually a switch and into sissies. So sometimes I can tie her up and use her, sometimes she can do that to me. Other times we can get dolled up in pretty pink outfits and bring home some men to fuck us. Oh, this is a robust fantasy, that is for sure. You are a manly man, you're a sissy girl, you're a twinky gay boy, and you like to have fucked up threesome with your girlfriend as if you're a female friend of hers. Interesting. I can't say that I'm turned on, but I'm definitely intrigued and interested. Or a new world order where everyone gets tested on how sub and dom they are, and I'd rate very sub, so I'd be sold as a sissy sex slave to a hot dom rich couple. Love you. Oh, I love specific stuff like this because it means that you've thought about what you want and what you like, and you're also understanding of how fantasy is not necessarily reality. Even if it's not possible, you still allow yourself the release of having these fantasies in your mind and enjoying them probably in your free time or with your girlfriend. I personally think that's healthy and I can get on board with the shape-shifting aspect. I would like to be able to shape-shift into like the perfect woman of any guy and then just get absolutely used and abused because he can't stop himself from just going to town on me and maybe that's why I try to make myself as conventionally attractive as possible so that's as close to reality as possible for most of the guys that I'm with. I can say honestly that if a guy is not really attracted to me it's a big turn-off. I mean that's Sounds like 
idea that might not be so weird, but I mean like if a guy's like, yeah, I'd fuck her or whatever, like the fuck is not worth it to me if the guy isn't at least really attracted to me. I don't have to be his perfect woman, but the closer I get, the hotter it is to me. Especially with virginist type boys. Oh my God. Which I've found as I'm getting older still exist in their 20s and 30s. They're not necessarily virgins anymore, but they're kind of innocent and you just want to corrupt them. At least I do. Anyway, this next one's a little weird. I'm not quite sure. It's from someone pseudonyming as Sexy Milf. So I'm assuming it's a female. And they said, I want to stick my hands and feet in women. So like the whole hand and the whole foot in women while getting ass fucked and getting a blow job in a public bathroom. Okay, so it's someone with a dick. Is it a sexy trans milf that wants to stick their hands and I can't even imagine this scenario. It's so obscure that I don't even really understand what's going on. Is anyone else turned on by this? Because I'm just left pretty confused. Sins and selfies. Didn't know about this email. I have a stepsister I'd love to sleep with. Sweet and simple. I think a lot of people have that impulse and I think a lot of people have the impulse stronger than if it was just a girl that looked exactly like their stepsister but wasn't their stepsister because there's a bit of taboo there but it's not so much taboo that it's like legit incest where you're gonna have an offspring that's like completely retarded or something. So it's like an achievable taboo. Has anyone else had a family member that they're not directly related to but like grew up with or like a really close friend that they were like, hmm, I wonder after all these years of growing up with this person and spending this time with this person or being told I'm not allowed to be attracted to this person, I wonder how they would be in bed. I personally haven't. I hate most of my family members and most of them are not even near what most people would find attractive, but I can totally see myself being attracted to a stepbrother or a stepsister for sure because like, why not? The biology isn't there telling you to stop so it's just the time spent and if they're a new stepbrother or a new stepsister and you didn't grow up together, why not? And especially why not when you think about how delightfully taboo it is. Weird slash private kink. Hey Tara, 20 year old male from England here. Just for reference, ha? Huh? I said ha. Huh? <laughs> My super random kink that I don't tell people about is that I love the idea of having a female completely submit to me, both sexually and in general. I guess it's kind of like pet play in that I love the idea of being a sole caregiver for someone. I think the power balance is what makes it so hot. I'm definitely a hard dom and I think the whole concept is really fucking hot. Choosing what they wear, using them as a fuck toy when I want or need to, keeping them tied, okay, this is hot. This is hot. Please stop, okay? Keeping them tied up with a vibrator going or whatever you can think of as long as they're completely submissive and I'm in control, I fucking love it. No clue if you will see this. I'm guessing you're getting pretty swamped with emails. Haha. Ha. We are a hella horny community after all. Yes, we are. And I'm gonna include myself into that because I'm definitely one of you guys. Hope everything is going well in these crazy times. Lots of love from the UK. Right back at you, daddy. Oh my God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay? Yeah, I like the idea of a more strict lifestyle dom. This is something that a lot of people in the kink community actually do, like they'll have a dom in a sub relationship that goes beyond the bedroom. But I can't imagine doing it myself because I am far too bratty. I would just get like beaten all the time because I'd be like, no, I wanna wear whatever I wanna want. I wanna do whatever I wanna want, uh. You know, and I'd be like that. But maybe that would just make for more of a challenge for the dom, which the dom will probably like a lot. So maybe it would work out. But I do like having my independence, so I like to keep it more to the bedroom bedroom and just overarching ideas of the relationship rather than actually having the role play aspect where I literally have to ask him if I can go to the bathroom or get off of my vibrator or whatever the fuck. Good one though. Thank you for sharing. My sins. This is a fun one. He says, mine is pretty straightforward. I love giving blowjobs and playing with guys' dicks. I'm a straight-ish guy and I have no other interest in men except their dicks and making them hard and come. I feel like that's how I am with women. Like I have no interest, almost no interest in almost every woman in terms of being friends with them, in terms of dating them, in terms of even fucking them alone, but I guess you want to suck these dicks alone probably. I just like the physique of a woman, the delicateness and the softness of a woman, and I like it as this, oh my god, is that a tiny lizard? That is the tiniest lizard I have ever seen. All right, well, we got my bit of ADD out of the way for the video. <laughs> I wasn't able to capture any pictures or video of the little lizard. He was like an inch, like literally an inch. I thought it was a bug. He was running across here, and he was like an inch. It was so cute. That is one of the cool things about living here in Vegas, that's for sure. All of the animals that you encounter in your backyard, like the first time I saw a lizard in my backyard, I was like, this is the life I wanna lead. And the tarantulas, two living tarantulas that I've seen so far, that shit makes my day, man. Anyway, so sucking dicks when you're straight. I don't really care to argue
argue about the definition of what makes you gay or not. I feel like it's different to different people. Like obviously a lot of people are gonna think that if you just stick something in your butt, like Jay thinks this, if you just stick anything in your butt, like just a finger or something, you're automatically at least pretty far along the gay spectrum. Then there are people who think that you have to actually be attracted to the personality of a guy or want to date a guy to be gay. And I think you would fall in that category. And then there are some people that are like, obviously if you're attracted to the sex organs, you are by definition gay. And I don't know where I stand on that, but it's very interesting. I wonder where stuff like that comes from. Do you in general get along better with women? Maybe you're gay, but you get along better with women. And you're, so you're kind of like me if I was really attracted to women, you know, instead of just being by trending toward men. I think that's kind of how I would be with women is I would be like, well, girls, I really want to fuck you, but you're insufferable most of the time. So yeah, super interesting. And remember guys, we do not judge here. You can state your opinions, but this whole thing that I see on like sex positive videos often where it's like, this is a downfall of society. Yeah, no, it's not mainstream media dividing us by racial and cultural lines and the world falling apart because of COVID and no, it's not that. It's because people like to enjoy things sexually. Yeah, sure. Okay. Submission. <laughs> Sometimes I fantasize about a girl jacking me off while I take a shit. I want to blow my load as the shit falls out of my ass. I also think this is a good way to get over the phase where people are afraid to poop in front of each other. Why, pray tell, should we get over the phase where we're afraid to poop in front of each other? I feel like I still haven't gotten over that phase. Is that a phase I was supposed to get over? I know Freud has a lot of different phases like the anal phase and the phallic phase or whatever the fuck. It's been a while since I've read any Freud, but I don't think the anal phase was all about having communal shitting parties. So yeah, I'm not really against being around people while other people are shitting, but I would rather not have people around me while I'm shitting unless it's like a turn on for them, in which case I'm a little weirded out sexually, like to each their own, but that doesn't turn me on. But it is interesting. Have you tried playing with your asshole? <laughs> Just a quick question. Have you tried playing with your asshole? You know, if Jay were out here, he'd be cringing right now because I'm yelling and I'm sure my neighbors can hear me. Elderly guy in a band probably wouldn't care, but I feel bad for the elderly people over there that are very nice and sweet. So if you guys do happen to watch this, hey guys, love being your neighbor. You're so quiet. I have shorts on under this, calm down. So my theory is that while you're pooping, you are obviously putting pressure on your colon and rectum or whatever. And inside your rectum, you have your, uh, what's it called, prostate. And that is where a lot of men derive their secondary orgasm from, or their even better orgasm is by stimulating the prostate. So perhaps you and your brain have kind of correlated the two because there's pressure on your prostate as you're taking a shit. And so you think of it kind of sexually. Interesting. Let's do one more, shall we? How long have I been filming? 20 minutes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, this one's gonna be a little controversial, but whoever said that I shy away from controversy, especially when I feel like I have good intentions. So this person says, entry. It turns me on when a white girl says the word N word, I will get banned for saying. I think the term for this is race play. Race play is very different from like having the BBC stereotypical fetish blacked stuff that I played up in the past on the internet. And I say played up on the internet because I kind of keep that to myself now because of the race relations of the country and because so many people in the community are extremely toxic. Like they'll start talking shit about white guys or they'll call me racist or they'll say that white boys are crying or something. I don't like that toxic bullshit. Like let's just sit here and appreciate some BBC and appreciate some milky skin next to some chocolate milky skin. Like that is hot and beautiful and awesome and whatever, like have fun with it. But when you get like toxic people in the community hating on white boys and then you get like white boys actually saying that I'm uh, I forget the word, the term for a girl that sleeps with a black guy and has an offspring with him. There's like a derogatory word for that. I forget. People cannot just separate themselves from the races. It's fucking crazy. Like I think race play, fetishizing anything that you want, wh whether it's yellow fever or jungle fever, whatever the fuck, I'm sorry if that's offensive, go stick it up your ass. But I think all of that stuff is fine within the context of respecting the other person and knowing that it's a fantasy and it's a bedroom thing and it's something that's consensual between two adults. And I don't understand why so many people have to villainize things that people enjoy in their fantasy lives, in their sex lives or privately, and then try to attribute some kind of bias to it or something. Like, what does it say about the person who is black and likes the race play? But anyway, this wasn't supposed to be a commentary on all this shit. It's just been something that's been bothering the fuck out of me on many levels, not just on the sexual level lately. And for me personally, I think that kind of race play, if I found someone that I trusted that wasn't gonna like record me and then flip it in the internet or something, and then I lose my job, which I don't have, so I wouldn't mind too much, I guess. I would definitely do that. And to me, yeah, it would be hot too. I don't know what it is exactly that makes it hot. I think as I've stated in a lot of my other videos, the one about blacked and interracial porn and black men or whatever, that I just think that in my normal life, I think that we're all just pretty much similar and I judge everyone on an individual basis. But sometimes it's fun to be like, I'm the slutty little personality-less bimbo that you're using and you're 
for the personality list black guy and we're role playing in that way. I think that's hot. I think it's fun. I think it's interesting to play up on our differences because in real life we're supposed to be focusing on our similarities and our individuality and not some collectivism bullshit. So sometimes it's fun to do the opposite of what you do in real life in bed. I think that will wrap it up here. Let me know what you think on that. I'm open to both sides of the argument. I'll argue with you in the comment section probably if you're arguing in good faith and aren't just like calling me names and stuff. That's kind of when you lose. I hope you can remain generally respectful while stating your honest opinion in the comments and try to keep an open mind. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to submit your pickup lines to me. How would you message me or your dream girl or a girl on Tinder? Think about it like that. How would you start a conversation with the opposite sex or the person you're attracted to on Tinder or as a celebrity that you think will have the optimal good response to it? Once again, terrorrates at gmail.com or hashtag terrorrates on Twitter. I love you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, if we get a lot of good feedback on it, if the video does well, I will do another one. We will do different things. It all depends on what you guys want to see and what does well on the channel because this kind of stuff, while it's fun, it's no longer what drives me passionately and creatively. So this is kind of just a way for me to blow off steam and talk about sex when I'm horny or something, you know? I have a story to tell you guys sometime in the near future, by the way. I'm just waiting for it to flesh out more, but maybe we have another sex-ish story coming soon. All right, I love you guys so much. I'm gonna come over there and hug you. We're at 70 millimeters, so it's gonna take me a long time to get to you, but I'm coming. I love you. Bye.